Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today, we're discussing the Zenith Chronomaster XXT Open Grand Dot. 45 millimeters in stainless steel, this is one of the watches that 2000s era Zenith head honcho Terry Nataf simply got right. A combination of a Baroque polished stainless steel case in 45 millimeters, a power reserve, a grand date, partially skeletonized date complication, and a fully skeletonized set of bridges for balance as well as escape wheel. This is a watch that gives you 90% of the aesthetic fascination of a tourbillon at 10% of the price. On my wrist, it's a Baroque combination of steps, polished flanks, fluted aspects, and gaudron. It's almost like an Art Deco statement as you can feel the machine aesthetic as well as the tangible optimism and futurism of that era inherent in the bezel and the lug design of this watch. It is a broad watch from lug to lug, not a big bully. It's, it's not super huge. At 53.5 millimeters across the wrist, it's almost exactly the same dimension lug to lug as a 45 millimeter traditional Betterini case Panerai Luminor. You will note that the thickness of the watch, about 16.5 millimeters, also about on par with a 44 millimeter Betterini case Panerai Luminor. The spacing between the lugs was quite progressive back then. 22 millimeters gives the watch a handsome proportional stance and a broad f footing or planted appearance on the wrist. The strap is nicely made and, and richly appointed, bolstered generously. It has a lot of volume to match the swell of these lugs. It's all of gloss finish with rectangular scale alligator leather, black sheer cut sides that show the layers of construction and a monotone stitch. There's a more natural calf coloration on the underside. And another thing that Nataf did that was absolutely spot on was eliminate pin buckles on most of the premium models, including all of the Chronomasters. So you get a full polished steel deployant buckle, and it is a substantial one. This has a weight to it, a heft, and crisp interlocking tolerances that remain as sharp today as when they left Laloque back in the 2000s. The case is expressive. You will note my favorite feature of the watch, the gaudrons of the bezel countersunk below the planes of the lugs. So it's almost as though the bezel is set between the pincers of a ring, almost as though it's a jewel set into a golden plinth ring or marriage band. Gaudron style bezel, you can see the fluted flanks building up to the generously cambered domed style sapphire, an expensive piece to specify. The lugs themselves, large, sheer, but not monolithic thanks to that fluted profile that runs straight to their ends. All in high polish, the case is exuberant, there's no doubt about that, but the watch generally seems equal to the promise of the case. There's a sense of occasion about this watch that makes it lovable and it's not goofy in any way. It actually lives up to the bombast of its case with a dial to match. We may as well talk about the dial, give ourselves slightly better focus and a little bit more light. There are different types of silver in the world. Oftentimes, silver can be a weak color, a milk toast color, a insufficiently expressive color. And then there are strong silvers. There's Mercedes AMG's Alubeam silver. There's Audi Sports. Avis silver, and then there is this dial where the silver is almost a machine ethic metallic coloration rather than the accent on a dress watch. You will note dimple style, outboard seconds and minutes track, all applied and blackened hour indices on top of a concentric circular grained base for the hour track itself. Inboard, you can see there's a stamped radial guilloche pattern and a different silver tone to make for contrast. That's the other problem with silver. Silver tends to blend into silver. Here, Zenith uses differential coloration as well as differential texture and galvanizing variation to break up the mass of the dial. You'll note there's a sapphire atop the dial side of the movement showing the double discs of the Grand Date. And then there's another one over the power reserve scale with its skeletonized rose gold hands at six o'clock. I will wind the watch so you can get a better view of that power reserve hand moving towards the end of its travel. The watch, by the way, 52 hour power reserve. Let's take a look at the movement. I'm gonna get as close as I can here. The movement is Zenith caliber 4039 and it features a 
special series of bridges, so you can actually see the fourth wheel with a tri-spoke pinion acting as your constant seconds. And then after the fourth wheel, you have the escape wheel, you can see the anchor oscillating away, you can even see the translucence of its violet pivot stones, and again, another fully skeletonized bridge, this time for the balance beating away at 10 beats per second, because it is an El Primero caliber in there. You'll also note that the bridges have been fully perlage engine turned, a thoughtful detail. Moreover, a blackened aperture to show you that mechanism in the same blackened character and tone as the Dauphine hands at center and the indices themselves on the dial. Now I should mention that the watch features a quick set function for its date, so rarely do I consider a date to be an entertaining complication, but in the case of a double disc, double digit date, I actually do consider it to be part of the theater of enjoying your watch and presenting it to friends. Now the chronograph itself, as ever with an El Primero, beats away at 10 beats per second, so it is a smoother sweep to the chronograph seconds hand than you'll see on a conventional chronograph, and it has a crisp and chunky column wheel actuation. I'm going to show you the column wheel function now, the column wheel and its levers, as you engage and disengage the lateral clutch, the recentering hammers falling on the hard cams at center. The El Primero has always been a good looking automatic chronograph caliber, and that's not universal in the industry. Oftentimes, automatic chronograph calibers can be quite bland with very little visible. Circular Cote de Genève on the mass, perlage on the bridges, an unusual choice, straight graining on the chronograph levers, and you will note. Most of the screws, not all of them, black polished, those screws that are black polished and uncoated are used for adjustment of the mechanism. Those that are blued screws or kiln fired blue oxidized screws are the screws that are used for physical assembly to hold unmoving things in place. Bidirectional automatic winding, 30 meter water resistant, once again, 50 to 52 hour power reserve. This watch has a multitude of talents. It's expressive, it's extravagant, but you know what? It lives up to the boast that it makes. This is a watch that has the goods, aesthetically and technically. With a crisp chronograph action, that's the last compliment I can pay it. It has one of the sharpest and most mechanical column wheel feels you will ever experience. See it and feel for yourself on the watch box.